I'm Michael Redmond, professional 9 Dime Go player. In this video, I'm going to talk about an attachment against the one space corner enclosure. So here we have a black corner enclosure, a one space corner enclosure, and white will play an attachment against it. This has become a very common move to be playing at early stages of the opening because it has been suggested by computer programs and it is quite an effective move in some board positions. Black has four choices against this move. In this video, most of the time I'm going to be talking about this Hane underneath. Another very likely choice for Black to do is to play a Hane on top. In general, when your opponent has played an attachment against a position where you're fairly strong, when the stones are touching like this, you have a choice of a move curling around it, which would be one of these moves, or to extend from the attacked stone. So that would be this move or this move. So in this video, mainly I'm going to be talking about this move, but also I will mention these two extensions, which are relatively simple. So it's this move underneath, and the extension down and the extension above. So just to start with, this move uh, is relatively simple and it's easy for white because white can imagine that there was a black stone, for instance, let's do it in the upper left corner. White, white could imagine that there was a black shape like this. It is also a common move to play a, a shoulder hit after which black plays here. So it's the two shapes have reverted to each other. And white can, just to go back to the position on the right, this position, white can continue with an extension. Locally, extension would be a reasonable move. Or white can play a jump. These would be moves that would be taking care of this move that white has played. Also, white could be playing an attachment on the right. So this would be looking to play something like this. It's interesting to note that this sequence has been suggested by Gosegen uh, even before AlphaGo came around. Gosegen was suggesting this in some kind of an extension on the side. So this is the idea has been around for a while, and I think it originated with Gosegen. Also, white can play away, just because the fact that this stone has not incurred very much damage yet. It's less heated up than if black had played this move. So if black plays here, I would say in early stages of the game, white might as well just leave it and consider that exchange of the white marked stone for black one is it's probably a, a kikashi it's probably a, um, a slight gain for white to have that exchange this is similar only it's more likely that white will continue locally so locally white could continue with this move and black will cover in the corner white can play an extension it's almost like white got a free stone there because black already had the corner and closure had a position there and so white's extra stone there, you can count at least one extra stone for white, maybe this one, does form a kind of an extension on the upper side. Whereas black already had a territory, something like this to start with, black's territory has not really gotten that much bigger. So I'd say it's relatively easy for white to play in the case that black plays down or this extension up. So this is much more of a challenge to white. And white has only one good looking local move, which is to cover on the third line. This again is a point where if black wants to keep things simple, black can play here. But one has to remember that this also makes it relatively easy for white too, because white has not lost anything yet. This area, it looked like it was going to be a black territory anyway. So white has not really made any major losses. White could continue, for instance, with a move somewhere on the side, somewhere around here, 
unless white has a strong position in the locality, playing a connection at A could sometimes be a bit heavy if black gets to pincer it. For instance, if there's a black stone somewhere, for instance, in the upper left corner, this could be a bit heavy for white. So white would be looking at more light moves moving out to the side. And even if black does cut here, locally that's going to be good shape for black, but it's arguable that these two stones, for these two stones, have given white some extra forcing moves in the area. For instance, uh, white would probably continue towards the left side, but later on white can play moves like this and they will be forcing. Or if the center is important, white can sometimes play here and try to get some stones towards the center. It always depends on the board position. And for the time being, white will just leave this. So you could say that white's loss here is relatively small. So while this is perfectly feasible for black, it does give white the option of connecting at A or attaching at B is another option that I'm listing here. If black plays something like this, then white gets to make a position on the right side. Again, this would be white making a position on the right side, something like this. And those two stones, this exchange for these two black stones and these two white stones is still, it looks like it's slightly profitable for white when white plays something from the side, somewhere around here. There's some more potential there for white than there would have been if, if that exchange had not been played. So again, the challenging move is for black to cut here. And this leads to two main variations, because white's only move here is to extend, but now black has two choices. Of course, it's necessary that the latter favors white. Otherwise, black could just connect here, and this would be relatively difficult for white, unless white can capture in the latter. However, if we look at the whole board positions in which this is played, almost always there's going to be a black stone on the triangle point, and I'll mark the white stones with squares. So there's usually, usually it's a parallel opening with two white stones on the left half of the board, and black has played a star point and a corner enclosure. So the latter is going to favor white. Almost always this is the board position when this move, when white's move here is played. So black, assuming that black has two choices. So black can play an Atari here to exchange with this and then connect on this side. And now white cannot capture a ladder or black can push here, which is another way of avoiding the ladder. So I will start with this move. And black will connect here. At this point, the most straightforward way for white to play is to cut here and capture the one stone. Black will curl around and white has a choice here. The strongest local move would be to capture the one stone. The idea being that if black captures white's two stones in the ladder, then white has very good shape covering here. And this would give white a lot of uh, potential on the upper side. Again, assuming if there's a white stone here, it becomes very difficult for black to invade the upper side. And if black does invade the upper side, black's going to be under attack. So white has a lot of potential in that direction. Usually it's not so good to have two stones captured like this. But again, we have to remember black started with a corner enclosure, a strong position already in this corner. And the fact that this is sort of added onto that makes it less efficient. It would be more efficient if the black group started out being weak and then captured two stones to make a strong shape. The fact that black started with a strong shape and is just adding onto it reduces the value of capturing those two stones. They're, they're still big, uh, big two stones, but when we look at the good shape that white has on the upper side, I would say this is usually good for white. The other option black has is to extend here and white also extend. This becomes a very sharp fight. If, if we assume that black has a stone in this corner, then I'm going to say that white does not really want to fight too strongly here and playing here. 
takes a balance. So white is threatening to save the three stones, but also offering them to black. So offering to give them to black if black plays something like this, and white can extend on the side. If we assume that black has a stone in the lower right corner on the mark point, then this is reasonable for white to reduce the right side. White also has a position on the upper side. And also the fact that black's corner territory here is open on the side. So white has that slide at the mark point later. The black territory in the corner is not so big. So this would be playable for white. I would like to take a look at this in a game position. So now we will go to a full board position to show this. Here we have a position taken from one of AlphaGo's games against itself. So it's a, a game from the self-played set of games for the master version of AlphaGo. And in the upper left corner, we have a corner enclosure, but actually it's a large knight's corner enclosure. So this is going to be an example of how black can play this attachment. And if white covers on this side, it actually reverts to the same position that we were just looking at. And in this game, white did cut on the fourth line and play an Atari here. Black extended down, white connected. And we're going to see a slightly different order of moves that is very similar in the result. Black started with the attachment here, and white pushed, and then black cut. So it's a different order of moves, but exactly the same shape as we were just looking at. White curled around on Atari, and in this case, black connected. So if black had taken here, it would have been the variation I was just showing you. In this case, white will just extend. And with all these white stones, not only the strong corner position, but the fact that white has these stones on the right, a fairly strong position in the center, it's going to make it that much more difficult for black if black tries this kind of thing. For instance, this fight would be much more difficult for black and much less possibilities for black to counterattack during this attack. So black actually connected. White continued with this move. And black got to curl around. So for the price of giving white this forcing move at the mark point, black did get to surround a moyo in the lower left area because white continued with this on the upper side and black continued with this. So you can see in this game, it developed into a moyo. Well, also white had a moyo here. This was one of the more exciting games, actually. I did do a commentary for it at AGA. So here we are back at the starting position. And so white attached, black plays a honey underneath and black will cut here usually. Now let's take a look at the other variation where black pushes here. For the time being, this is threatening to capture the two white stones in a ladder. So first white cuts here. And now white will extend. So in this variation, white is for the time being threatening to capture a black stone in a ladder with this a move at the mark point. So black will curl around. Now white actually has two choices, but in this local variation, I'll just show you the main one and we will see the exception in a board position. White almost always extends here once to see whether black will connect on top or curl underneath. Almost always black will connect on top, but let's take a look at this one. If black curls underneath, Black is giving up some territory there. So obviously white has the option later on of pushing through here and extending to get an eye there. Otherwise, if black tries to squeeze, white gets to push through. This looks a bit dangerous for black. Also white will have 
that after that extension white will have the option of playing something like this and playing forcing moves from this side eventually getting some kind of a position on the side so white has that extra potential when black rolls underneath And in this case, white will just curl around on top and have a good position towards the center. This is usually good for white, so almost always black connects on top. So in return, white will get a forcing move here. And this will develop into a big fight in the center of the board. So this is going to fill a lot of space, and I would like to take a look at that in a full board position. Okay, I'm back with this board position. This is a position where it's quite common for white to play this attachment. And black plays the strongest counterattack with this push. This is probably the strongest move here, and it's most often seen in human games also. White extends. Black does want to take from underneath, because if black takes from the side, that makes it so much easier for white to play this forcing move, even though the center might develop in a similar fashion. It is better for black to take underneath once and force white to play the extra sacrifice in order to get this forcing move. And that would lead to this variation. In this board position, I'm going to show you white just curling around here, and white would start playing moves towards the left half of the board. This actually is a pretty close game. It's an even game, more or less. White does have ideas of using the, these stones as a kind of a thickness. You just draw an imaginary line here. Of course, if white does connect up on both of these lines, it would be ideal and white would easily win the game. White does have that image there to use those four stones, these four stones here, as a kind of a thickness. And the fact that white has a stone here that is captured by black, it gives white the forcing move. For instance, the forcing move here, which is not going to be played, but it does have the effect that it's slowing black's progress into the center a bit. For instance, if black plays something like this, that white stone is going to stop black from playing a double honey because white is just has the double Atari here. And so it is slowing black down in black's attempt to get into the center. So you can see that white is sort of closing off the center. It's going to play with the lower part of the board and to a certain extent, the left half of the board. More or less even game. So now let's look at another example. Here we have the same board position. So the viewer probably realizes at this point that this attachment that white is playing against the black shimari, the black corner enclosure, is mostly played in this board position. In this game, white played one approach move first, and then played the attachment. It's very similar in that the idea is to play some forcing moves before white decides what to do with this stone. So if black is going to be playing something very simple like this, then maybe white could just continue with... Actually, white could has a number of choices, but something like this even would work, with white stones starting to make some influence towards the center of the board. Black plays the strongest move here. I advise black in a position like this, usually when you have a choice between being playing safe and playing aggressively, you look to see whether you have a majority of stones in the immediate area. And because black does have this, this corner enclosure to start with, black does have an extra stone or so there. It seems to make sense that black should play strongly. So black cuts and pushes here. White is ready to sacrifice either the left or the right side, but black cannot really afford to allow white to capture this stone. So black will continue with this. 
and in this game white extended once probing to see whether black plays above or on, underneath and black played from above so i don't really recommend this move it's giving up something free and white will just continue this way it makes it relatively easy for white with black's corner territory being reduced a little bit so black played the strong move inviting this fight white curls her around curling around here is the main variation while there are some other variations that are much more complicated but this is the most normal i would say move and black will play this move to move out into the center very natural to this point you can see both sides have weak groups in the center black will play a hana here and push white for a while in the center attacking white on the upper side at the same time this attachment here is the tesuji for white in this position taking advantage of the shortage of liberties that black has here these two stones have a shortage shortage of liberties and so when black pushes through and white cuts white is actually threatening to play here next and capture the two black stones black connects simply if with this move black cuts here white will just escape and the two black stones are dead now so black does not have time to cut at that point and now white crawls again so if white had continued by playing an Atari, then white would be forced to protect the cut because otherwise black can cut here and capture the white stones, which would not be good for white. So playing the Atari here is not a good move. It's better to crawl first and black does not really gain anything from capturing the one stone because white will take here and actually have a better position on the upper side it's actually improved white's position there so black simply extends white will curl again and connect to the corner so black's group in the center now this group here is growing into a fairly strong group white's group on the other side this group here it's not very strong yet but if we look at the right side, white does have potential to jump out here and put some pressure on the black stone on the side. White does also have to worry about, at some point, black might attack this weak point in white's group. However, white does not always have to save these four stones. At this point, they are not vital stones anymore. So white might be able to dodge that peep. So in return for black getting a strong group in the center, white also has got a fairly large territory in this area. It's over 20 points. And the territorial balance is pretty close even before Komi. So white seems to have a slight advantage in territory, while black has some potential to attack white in the center. So this is an even, even game. It's an even result. So now we're back to the local diagram. I just want to recap at this point. When white plays the attachment and black plays the hane underneath, black has two choices at this point to con connect or to cut. And then again, two choices at this point to play here and head for this trade or to play the push, which is much more aggressive and it, fit, it fits with this position usually when black has a local advantage to play very strongly like this and that will lead into this variation where now white has a choice between extending once which is the advised move i would say or curling around which curling around also works sometimes this would be a more simple easy to understand trade where black just takes the one stone and white will have the option of playing away at this point. So if you want to keep it relatively simple, this is how to play. 
And what white has accomplished here is white has reduced the scope of black's potential. So black started with a corner enclosure here. White has allowed black to get a little extra territory here, but white is controlling the center to a certain extent. So that's what white got in return. You can see that this has reduced the potential for black on the right side also, because that white wall, those white stones that are pointing towards the center, also pointing towards the right side. So it works well with that opening where black usually has a star point in this corner. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.